Hello and welcome to this film about visual representation of data. It's the last of the introductory films from the um, IB chemistry course and whereas up till now we've been looking at um, measurements that we might make and how precise and accurate they might be, here we're going to look at how we might present those measurements in a nice easy to read format. Okay. Once again this is really really important when you're writing up experiments. Now hopefully by the end of this film you'll uh, know what a good table looks like, what a good graph looks like, and also how we might start thinking about what mathematical relationships we can get from a graph. In other words, how we can use a graph to actually analyze the data that we've got in that graph. Okay, so let's start off by looking at a table of quantitative data. That is to say, uh, data that involves quantities. Okay, so the um, other type of data that you might have might be qualitative, where you might be listing observations that you've made, for example. In other words, things that you don't measure, but things that you can describe. Okay, so quantitative things are things that you can measure using numbers. Okay, and here's a table which, as you'll see, has got some very important features. It's got a nice clear title. Okay, so the title tells us what's in the table. It's also got column headings and what's really useful about these column headings or one of the useful things is not only telling us what the quantity is about but it's giving us a unit for each of those quantities so we're not seeing units dotted throughout our table what you'll also see here is that there is an absolute error for every one of these readings quoted in the column heading okay how do you know whether to put absolute or relative errors well the absolute error stays the same. So it doesn't matter what your reading is, the absolute error will always be the same. If you put relative error in the com column heading, it would only be correct for one or some of the values. It certainly wouldn't be correct for all of them unless they weren't changing. Okay, so clear column headings, units, errors, and a title for our table. Okay, in this particular table, we've not only got some raw data in these two columns. So here's our raw data in these two columns. These are measurements we actually made. In this final column here, we've actually taken these raw data and processed them to find some new data. So apart from having the column headings and the units and the errors, what we've also got in this column of processed data is some indication of what we did to find these numbers, okay? So to get these temperature changes, I took the final temperature and subtracted the initial temperature. And look, the error that we're quoting here is twice the absolute errors here because we've added these two absolute errors together because the operation we were doing here was addition or subtraction. In fact, it was subtraction, okay? But that should take you back to what we do with our errors when we're processing our data. Okay, now when it comes to graphs, um, now these things might <laughs> seem remarkably simple to you, but you might be surprised to hear that they are the cause of massive, massive numbers of marks being dropped when people do their coursework. Okay, so it really is important to get these things right. With graphs, like with tables, it's good if we've got a clear title that, telling us, that is telling us what the graph is about, so we don't have to guess. It's got labels for the axes, it's got units where necessary, okay? And what's more is that the data that we've plotted here is clear to see, okay? We're not just putting pencil points on our graph paper, but we're actually making the points stand out. So here they've used these kind of green blobs, but you might have chosen to put crosses through them. But what we don't want is very, very small pencil dots where we can't see the data that was actually plotted. Okay, this might, you might be able to see that this is heading towards a line graph. Now, it's actually very rare that we'll ever see any bar charts in science. So pretty much every graph you ever draw will be a line graph. Now, what kind of line? That's another question. Okay, and when you've plotted your data points, and you can see here the person has used crosses to show you where their data are on this graph paper. And once again, we've got labels for the axes with units. Not very good that we don't have a title for this one, so we're wondering what went on in this graph, but never mind for now. 
Okay, now what kind of line do we draw? Well, it's certainly not going to be join the dots, okay, unless we think that there's some kind of relationship which changes constantly throughout our independent variable changing, okay? And remember that our independent variable, so that is the thing that we were in control of, is always going to go on the x axis, all right? So if I'm measuring how far something has gone after certain amounts of time have elapsed, I'm in charge of basically deciding how often I make the measurements. I don't have any control over how far it goes. Okay, So this distance that this object is traveling depends on how long I let it travel for. I'm in charge of this, so it's independent. This is depending on this thing, so the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. Anyway, getting back to choosing what kind of line to draw, you could potentially draw a straight line through these points if you had a good reason for thinking that there should be some kind of linear relationship between these two quantities. Okay, But looking at these points, it looks more sensible to draw a best fit curve. Okay, But what we're never going to do, unless we're convinced that the relationship changes throughout our measurements, is do dot to dot. Okay, That's generally something that we don't see in chemistry experiments. Okay, but anyway, key points from that slide, independent variable on the x-axis, dependent variable on the y, and choosing a best fit line that seems to fit our data points. Okay, we're not going to try and hit all of them. In fact, there may be some that we deliberately choose to exclude because we think they might have been um, experimental runs which went wrong. For example, if I had a point which was way off this line, I might well think, well, I'm not going to try and get my best fit line to go near it because something obviously went wrong in that experiment. Okay, so we've looked there at what kind of mathematical relationship we're seeing between our data, and that's going to help us decide what kind of line we're going to draw. Here, let's have a look at how we might look at a graph to actually analyze some data that we've got. Okay, now your data analysis might go on before you even draw the graph. Okay, but if I've got a graph here of a volume of gas being produced and time, so perhaps I've got some chemical reaction that is giving off a gas. If I think about what the gradient of my line is at any particular time, well, it's y over x, or rise over run. And in this particular case, it would be the volume of gas produced divided by time, or in other words, centimeters cubed per minute. Okay, so by looking at what we've got on our x and our y axis and adding things to our graph and maybe considering what the intercept of a line is on the y axis, if we're deciding that our, we've got a straight line and that y equals mx plus c, okay, so our intercept could be found from a line. Or we could use the gradient of a line to find some other quantity. If we're measuring how many centimeters cubed of gas are given off per minute, well, this is a rate. Okay, so we're analyzing some data that we got about volumes and time to turn in to something, some other quantity or a rate. Okay, so there we are. Lots of key points about tables and graphs. You'll get lots of chances to practice those, obviously. But it's really important, okay, if you don't want to just throw away easy marks in your coursework, that you keep in mind those key points. If there's anything there that you're not sure about or you'd like a little bit of extra detail on or anything else that you really want to um, ask, please feel free to come and find me or to post a comment on YouTube.